So if you would please swiftly get to your seat and turn to your Bibles. <laughs> Try to be the star of the show. He tries to up, up me one more time. Okay. All right. First Samuel chapter 18. We'll read our verses again, 1 through 4, and um, continue in this thought. Today we'll have the example of friendship, the example of friendship with David and Jonathan. First Samuel chapter 18 and verses 1 through 4, and we'll get back into this. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, this is David here, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would let him go no more to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David. And his garments, even to his sword, and to his bow, and to his girdle. He loved him as his own soul. What an example we have of a friendship with David and Jonathan. I'm going to give some more uh, examples today. We gave a little bit about the entering in of this friendship, how this even got started, uh, how that uh, maybe. Normally, this friendship would not have even been started, but because of the circumstances that God was bringing these men through, he brought them together, brought them into a wonderful friendship, and um, asked this question, have you entered into a friendship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, to be a friend, you have to enter into that uh, friendship. And then we looked at some things, some uh, ex exhibits some expressions of that friendship, how David gave some things, or Saul, uh, I'll get it right here in a second. Jonathan gave some things to David, maybe some things that were special to Jonathan. You know, Jonathan as the prince, as the heir to the throne, uh, would be normally, but gave some things to David and how he expressed that. And so now we're going to go through the example, example of this friendship, example of this friendship. So let's pray and we'll look at some things uh, today uh, about friendship. And I hope that you do have some friends, hope you do show yourself friendly, I hope that you're always seeking to be friendly to others, uh, whether or not we'll enter into a friendship with some, uh, we're still to be uh, a, um, a holy people, we're to be a people that others can look to. Uh, others uh, need to see Christ living in us. And so we need to be a, a friendly people. Uh, so let's pray and we'll, we'll read some more scriptures. All right. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for helping us, guiding us, directing us in your word. I pray for wisdom, pray for understanding today as we look at your word about some things, uh, make some comparisons, uh, see this example of Jonathan and David and the friendship that they had, and uh, we do want to have some good, uh, healthy friendships. Uh, we do know that you are very much our friend when we're saved, that you just help us, you uh, uh, express your love to us, your friendship to us in so many ways, and many times without us showing that friendship back. So please just help us today. Uh, open our eyes to some things that will help us be better people for Thee. Pray for lost people to be saved and, and pray for our hearts to be changed. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Uh, when David was victorious over Goliath, uh, I don't know if he knew what his future was. You know, he had been anointed by Samuel to be the future king, but that was not set up to be on that day, on that particular day that he was anointed, this would be in the future. And so what kind of things do you think went through David's mind as he knew one day future he would be the king of Israel, um, that uh, Saul had been rejected of being the king because of Saul's disobedience. Uh, Saul had enjoyed a friendship with the Lord and then left that friendship in disobedience to the Lord. 
And remember, uh, Saul gave excuse of a partial obedience, and we know that to be a disobedience. Uh, we need to go and be fully and wholly following the Lord and uh, wholly uh, obedient, obedient to the Lord and what he has for us. God has given us many uh, principles. He's given us many examples. He's given us commands, uh, many things in his words that we could have a better life. You know, but it's, uh, it's our choice whether we want that or not. And uh, it's the choice of, uh, of millions, even billions around the world on if they'll choose Jesus Christ as Savior and if they'll choose God as the one true and living God uh, to, to be a help to them, to be their, their Savior, their guide, their, uh, their way of eternal life, uh, all these things, and to definitely be a, be a friend. So I don't know if David realized the importance of this friendship, but it would prove to be uh, very important in the future, and we, we won't get into all of that in, in this lesson today, but it was important, and God put these two men together for a reason and gave them a, a friendship. There was a potential there as David entered into the kingdom, entered into Saul's household. Uh, there was a potential for him to grow, uh, but we see that uh, there were times when there was adversity also. You know, that's what's uh, true in the lives of friends. Uh, there's opportunities to be able to grow together, but sometimes there's adversities that come about too. And so all these things work together to help us, uh, help us in our lives, help us to grow for the Lord. Proverbs 18.24 says, A man that hath friends must show himself Friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. All right, let's look at some, some things about a friend. Look at Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. And again, not sure we'll get through uh, all of these scriptures. Hopefully, uh, we'll have a good uh, foundation and a good uh, message for us to uh, come away with. Luke chapter 15. We know this to be, uh, uh, as the uh, title is given there, maybe you have that in your Bible above chapter 15, concerning God's love for sinners and how uh, God does have a love for the lost, wants to enter into a friendship with the lost, but he does not do what sometimes I'm afraid uh, Christians do, uh, become a friend and try to win somebody over and uh, maybe, maybe later on down the, down the road, we're going to try to, to give Jesus Christ to them. Uh, we need to give Jesus Christ. We don't know uh, day by day what we have in store. We're not assured of tomorrow as far as our next breath, uh, as far as our life here on earth, as far as our uh, circumstances, our opportunities. We don't know what we have. We don't know what God has in store uh, for us. So we need to take advantage. We need to be redeeming the time. And uh, whatever time that is that uh, God will allow us to have. Let's look here in, in uh, Luke chapter 15, reading verses 1 through 7. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners to, for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over 90 and 9 just persons which need no repentance. What a friend, the shepherd to the sheep. The shepherd could have stayed with those 90 and 9 sheep, but one sheep was lost, just one. And, you know, you and I maybe would have said, well, hey, we still have 99. We still have a majority here. We still have all these sheep. And so that's good enough for me. 
But the shepherd, the true friend said, I have a lost sheep. And that sheep is as special to me as all these 90 and 9 that are here in this safety. All these 90 and 9 that have a special home, that have a special place. All these 90 and 9 that are not lost. There's one that's lost. And I need to go after that one that's lost. That's what Jesus did for me when he gave me salvation. When I was lost, he came searching for me. Even when I, when I thought I was saved, when I thought I had everything going for me, when I thought, you know, everything was good, I still had those doubts. And Jesus was searching for me, and he found me, and he saved me. Because I was special to him. I can't stand up in here today and say, you know, I was special to him, but you weren't. Because you know, each and every single one of you, that you are special to the Lord. Every single person. That's why I believe that it's such a, a joy to know that salvation is on a personal level. He saves a person at a time. That that one soul is special. And there's rejoicing in heaven over that one lost sheep that finds Jesus Christ. And that is found, that is not lost anymore, but is found. And so we have a friend, a friend that is a personal friend. A friend that would go after one person, even one. You know, I, I don't know that I could do the very same things that the Lord did. I would like to say that, that yeah, I, I would do that too. But I don't know. It's hard sometimes to leave the, the comforts that we have. It's hard to leave sometimes the security that we have. We don't know. And it's not given in this parable about the, the, the hazards that the shepherd faced along the way. About the comfort that he left to go out. It was... I know it, by, by the thing you can put it the, whatever you want to in, into it, but these things, all these things, these pictures that you have, this example of a friend. And that's the love that Jesus Christ has for us. I'm so glad that Jesus Christ left the 90 and 9 long enough to search for me and bring me back into that safe fold, bring me into a, a, a place with him that I could have a place with him. Look at with me at John chapter 10. John chapter 10. And we'll look at uh, verse 1 and following of John chapter 10. Thinking about this, this friendship. An example of this friendship. John chapter 10 verse 1 and following. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold... But climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. 
I'm glad for that good shepherd. That good shepherd that will give us safety. That good shepherd that will give us security. Give us promises, blessed promises. Give us our hope of eternal life. Not hope for eternal life, but a blessed hope that we have in him. We have a friend in the Lord Jesus Christ. What an example with this good shepherd. <clears throat> the way that he took care of his sheep. And gave us even this illustration that a hireling doesn't care for the sheep like a shepherd does. A thief does not care for the sheep like a shepherd does. And there's people that have uh, want to take advantage of you. There's people that maybe want to take advantage of some, some things that you have. Maybe take advantage of your friendship in one form or another. But Jesus Christ has everything to give to us. And I'm so glad that we're able to get things from the Lord. Not that I'm a greedy person and I just want and want and want, but Jesus gives and gives and gives. And that's special. And so I want to accept those things. And I'm glad that I accepted that free gift of salvation. It was free to me. It cost Jesus everything. But... It's free to me, and he offers that, and offers that free gift of eternal life. And so we see the example of those hirelings, of the thieves, those that would come in and destroy everything that the Savior, that the shepherd has worked for. They would destroy everything that that friend to the sheep came to do. And we know there's people in this world today, and even the devil, that want to take away your joy, want to take away your victory, want to take away maybe even a sense of security about salvation. You know, he, he works in all kinds of ways with all his tricks, all his wiles to take and to take and to take. God wants us to be a victorious people. And he gives us victories. He gives us many things beyond salvation. And I'm so thankful for that friend and that shepherd. Look with me at verse 15. Of John chapter 10. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. That's what Jesus Christ did for us. He laid down his life. Verse 17, therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. You know, that was a willing thing that Jesus Christ did for us. A willingness. A willingness of a friend that no one else would do for us. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and he rose again, according to the scriptures, as 1 Corinthians chapter 15 uh, tells us. And so we have these, we have this of the, our friend of Jesus Christ. Verse 18, no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Skip over to verse 27 to verse 30. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. What a special thing that we have, that security, that place in the hand of the Savior, and that place in the hand of the Father. That's a special place. Lost people don't have that place. They don't have the same things that we have. They don't have that salvation. They don't have that security. They don't have that special place with the presence of the Lord. Look at uh, Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Psalm 23, we'll just read a few of these verses. Talking about our friend, the, the shepherd, as, as he's been, uh, even gave himself as an example to our good shepherd. In Psalm 23, this first few verses here. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The Lord does these things 
for his name's sake, as we see in verse 3. He does these things for us as a friend and as a shepherd, and we have these things of him. You know, it's funny, I just heard this illustration before about uh, a child that went to Sunday school and uh, came back and, and, and told the parents what they had learned in Sunday school, and uh, it was about the shepherd that I don't want. Kind of got that uh, confused by a little bit. But it is something that sometimes that's how we are. That's what it seems like. That's not what the verse says. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In other words, the Lord gives and he gives and he gives and he gives and he gives. Because he is a special friend. Don't treat him like somebody that you don't want. Treat him as somebody that knows how to, to give and know how to accept things, those good and perfect gifts from him. Look with me back at John. Let's go to chapter 11. <clears throat> John chapter 11, verses 21 and following. The Bible says, Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. And this is where Lazarus has died. And now Jesus comes on the scene. Remember, Jesus tarried. Jesus didn't come right away. He could have, right? This shows us a little bit that the Lord knows more than what we know. And we have different ways that we'd like to see a situation play out. And sometimes just the Lord just has his own special way of doing things. She said, if thou has been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he will, shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And so there was a time there when even Martha said, Well, I believe in the resurrection, Lord. I believe that. I believe that my brother, in that last day, that he's going to rise again. The Lord had something very special for his friend, Lazarus. And he would raise him up again from the dead. You know, there was something else for people to see in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he had power even over death. And we know that to be true. We know that, that uh, Jesus did raise people from the dead. And, and then this expression here, that in verse 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I'm glad for life. I'm glad that when I die, if that should happen first, that I will be eternally living with the Lord. And if the Lord uh, should tarry his coming, that's, that's what happened. This old body is going to die and going to pass away. The older I get, the more that becomes reality to me. The more aches and pains and everything that I experience as an older man, uh, that becomes more and more real. But Jesus gives eternal life. What a friend we have in Jesus. All right, look at um, John chapter uh, 15. John chapter 15. The examples of friendship. John chapter 15, starting verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that you love one another. And so we see that Lord Jesus Christ gives life. He is the resurrection and the life. 
He gives eternal life. He gives abundant life. And he gives a secure life. And I'm so glad for those things that the Lord gives to us. Look at verses 18 and 19. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. The world doesn't have anything for me. You know, there are some pleasures in life. There are some riches to be gained in life. There are some things that I can have while I'm in this world. But the world and the world system does not have anything for me because the world is not my friend. Jesus Christ is my friend. And so anything that the world has to offer is just a distraction from the Lord because that's what they want to do. They want to entice me away from my fellowship with the Lord. They can't pull me away from my relationship. I had that relationship. I'm saved. I know that I'm saved. I have that. I always have that. And so the world, and the devil, cannot take away that relationship, but they sure can damage my joy. They sure can take away some of the joyfulness, some of the happiness, some of the things that I can enjoy in the Lord. They can maybe take away some victories. They can come between me and my close walk with the Lord. So there's some things that the world hates in us and the world would want to take from us. That's not a friend. That is not a friend. And there's a song, Our Great Savior, and we've, we've sung this song, Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul, friends may fail me, foes assail me. He, my Savior, makes me whole. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Hallelujah, what a friend. Saving, helping, keeping, loving. He is with me to the end. And we know that he is a, he is a lasting friend. And we know that to be true. There's nothing that can hurt that, uh, from that truth, from being true. Jesus Christ is a friend to us. And he goes even when we wander away from him. And we can't be lost, but we can lose some of that fellowship, some of that closeness that we enjoy with the Lord. He always is right there, ready for us to come back to him. And he's always searching for that restoration, that reconciliation, so that things will be right with him. Look with me at uh, Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. The example of friendship. Isaiah chapter 5. And starting in verse 1 and following, we'll, we'll have a, quite a few scriptures uh, here. Isaiah 5, verses 1 through 7 to start with. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. And I will lay it waste, it shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold oppression, for righteousness, but behold a cry. The Savior is that one that planted the vineyard. And he did everything possible to make sure that they were good grapes. As a result of that planting, uh, getting those stones out, uh, building a hedge, building protection, all these things that, that uh, the shepherd did for that vineyard. And what, what is he given in return? Wild grapes. Grapes that weren't as good as what was expected 
grapes that weren't as good as what he could have had. And so let's look further at chapter 7 and verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7 and 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and, and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Look at verse 2 of chapter 9. Chapter 9 and verse 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them hath the light shine. So there's been light given. Verse 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the, of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And now look at chapter 12. Isaiah chapter 12. The Bible says, And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me. Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Now you've seen the way friendship could have gone. There's ways that the Lord is a friend to us. And in return, he has just asked for a friendship back. But sometimes we're like those, that land that gives up those wild grapes. And we're nothing even close to being the friend that the Lord is to us. And then we see a promise was given. A promise of the Messiah. You know, the Jews did not take up on this. There's Jews that are still looking for the Messiah to come. And they've heard about Jesus Christ, but don't believe that he was the Messiah that was promised. We look back, we see the prophecies uh, in the beginning, from the beginning, the prophecies that were given about Jesus Christ. And we believe that he came to be the Savior of the world, that he came to die and take our sins and the sins of the whole world upon himself. But we have these things and these precious promises. And what does he want in return, I think? And more comes to this chapter and even in this verse in that day shall ye say praise the Lord call upon his name declare his doings among the people make mention that his name is exalted sing unto the Lord for he hath done excellent things this is known in all the earth that's the friend that we know it's not always evident in our life it's not always evident in my life but that's the friend that we know that has done excellent things for us. And he continues to do it. And sometimes at the end of the day, I wonder why the Lord's been so good to me in that day. And it's a shame because I haven't really given him much time. I haven't really praised him. I haven't exalted him. A lot of the things that I could have done for him as a friend, back to him, when he's been such a friend to me. The next day, I hope it'll be different, and sometimes it's not. Sometimes time goes by. The Lord says, hey, I'm a friend. I'm going to do this for you today, and he does stuff for me, and he loves me. I've had a thought here for, I don't know for, for how long now, but not just the Lord loving me, but sometimes I thank him just for loving on me. I think about people that love to hug. 
Some people show their affection maybe more so than others. And uh, I'm, I'm probably not as much a hugger as some. Uh, that's fine. We're, we're different. We're different people. Sometimes there, there may be a, another verse that could be given, a time to hug and a time to refrain from hugging. I don't know. A purpose for everything under the sun. But I think about that love that my friend has for me. I think sometimes he just gives me a little hug, a little squeeze. He says, I'm here for you, friend. What can I do? What can I do for you? What a shame that we're sometimes like those wild grapes. We're not like those sweet grapes that the Lord intended for us to be, but we're more like those, those wild grapes. Let's look at uh, Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1 and and verses 4 through 8. John to the seven churches which are in Asia... Grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. I see someone here that's, he's consistent. He's consistently a friend. And he always is, he always was, and he always will be. Many times in my life, things have not gone the way they could have gone because of inconsistency in my life. I see that whether it be in my family, and with my friends, with my work, whatever it may be. Sometimes I'm just not consistent as I should be. And uh, sometimes even with my witness, I'm not as consistent as I should be. The Lord is Alpha and Omega, and He always was, and always is, and always will be. I'm so glad for His friendship. Let's hurry. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Verses 1 through 3 and also verse 10. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Verse 10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Glad for what the Lord does for us. What a beautiful picture of what the Lord does. Verse 3 says, things that he gives to us, things that he gives for Israel, and I believe things that he does for us. Beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Why? So we can be the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. The Lord's done something for you. If you're saved today, the Lord's done something for you. 
And he started a friendship with you that we did not realize before until we accepted him as Savior. Uh, look with me one more. Isaiah 64, and starting in verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Thou meetest him with rejoiceth, that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. Those that remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wroth, for he hath sinned. In those is continuance, and we shall be saved. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father. We are the clay, and thou art potter, and we all are as work of thy hand. Turn to me very quickly, uh, Jeremiah chapter 8. And we'll finish with these verses. Jeremiah 18, excuse me. Jeremiah 18, verses 1 through 4. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. I'm so glad that my friend, as that potter, knew there were Mars in my life, but he keeps working on me, and he keeps molding me, trying to make me better and better and better for him. I'm not perfect. I'm not without my Mars and blemishes. I'm glad for the time that the potter gives to the clay. My friend Jesus is such a potter. And what he has done with this clay, I don't know where to start and I wouldn't know where to end. The Lord's done amazing things. I don't always rejoice with him. I don't always acknowledge him. But I should. I should be the kind of friend back to him that he is to me. We all should be. What a friend we have in Jesus. I say we ought to be a better friend. From this day forward, may we be a better friend to the best friend we could ever have. I could never want for a better friend than what Jesus is to me. And I thank him and I praise him for it. Let's close in a, a word of prayer. Thank you, dear Lord, for being my friend. Thank you for what you've given to me. And I thank you that you've been consistent in my life. Please forgive me for not being consistent for you. That you forgive me for not having that joy that you're giving to me. For not claiming a victory that you've given. For not claiming up on a, an opportunity that you've given, not taking the time that you've given, not reaching out to a lost person that you've given, not reaching out to be a help to someone that you've put in my path. Heavenly Father, please forgive me. And please help me. Please help me to be more of a friend to you. And I thank you so much for being a friend to me. Thank you for saving me, and thank you for all your wonderful, wonderful gifts. Thank you for those benefits that you load me with daily and load us all with. May we be more thankful to you, May more appreciative, more willing to work and to be what we should be for you, work to get the gospel out, and more to be a friend to, to others around us. We don't have to compromise to be a friend. Dear Lord, we have your truths. 
and we see the victories that we can have in your word. So please help us. Please help us to be the right kind of friends to others and the right kind of friend to you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.